Hello, John Bloodworth, Gentleman Crafter here again. I've got another tutorial for Scan and Cut users, and this one again features the installable version of Canvas Workspace. This time around, I'm going to show you how to create your own multicolored patterns, how to transfer them to your machine, and then draw them out and keep those colors. Um, so it's called a guilloche pattern, and it's the kind of um, very fine patterning that you would see on things like banknotes, security seals, um, certificates. Now, I'm not trying to encourage you to do anything dodgy, but it is a fabulous way of creating patterns that you can then draw out with your machine and go on and use in your card making and scrapbooking. So let's take a look at what a guilloche pattern is, and then I will show you how to create something similar in Canvas Workspace. The dictionary defines guilloche as ornamentation resembling braided or interlaced ribbons. A quick image search on the internet reveals all sorts of patterns, styles and designs. And in my experimentations in Canvas Workspace, I did manage to replicate um, quite a few of the designs that give it its particular style. So I'm going to share with you just a couple of those today and then obviously you will have lots of playtime hopefully at home so you can have a go and see what you can come up with. I'm using the installable version of Canvas Workspace on this occasion because there are some tools here that aren't included on the online version. So if you haven't already downloaded and installed that you will need to if you're going to follow along. To keep this video relatively short I'll be working quite quickly. If you need further guidance or assistance on the Scan and Cut or Canvas Workspace you might like to know about this. Just before continuing with this particular tutorial, I would like to take a moment to remind you about my full Scan and Cut course that's available now on Udemy.com. You can watch anywhere, anytime, ask questions and bookmark favorite sections. It's already received hundreds of five-star reviews. Follow the link in the description below to find out more. Okay, back on with today's um, topic guilloche patterns and as I mentioned we're going to be using basic shapes so for the first one I'm going to use a circle probably one of the simplest shapes you'll find and from the edit tab there are a few tools I'm going to use the first is changing the size so I'm just knocking that down to 25 millimeters which is one inch and the height is currently set at around four inches or 100 millimeters I'm going to be using the transform angle option a lot in this video, so it's worth finding out where that is. I'm basically currently just copy, paste, and then change the angle. And I'm repeating that all the way from zero up to 80. Once I've got the ninth shape on, I select them all, align the vertical and horizontal center, and then group them, then copy paste, and then change the angle to 90, and that's going to complete my rotations. So all I will need to do is select both and align the centers. And there is your first guilloche pattern made. How quick was that? Now I did promise you multicolored designs, so let's have a go at another pattern. And this time we'll, I'll show you how to organize um, the two colors so that both obviously it shows on screen, but also it's then easy to transfer over to your machine. So starting in the same way with a squished circle. I'm going to change the color of the first circle or sorry, the line of the first circle to a color that I'm going to, that's roughly what I'm going to use in real life. Then I'll copy and paste that circle, change the angle five degrees, change the color, align those objects vertically and horizontally, group them, and then as I did before, I'm going to copy paste and change the angle 10 degrees this time. And again, I'm going to repeat all the way up to 80. Now, 
when I've got to 80 I'll select them all align them group them and then as I did before copy paste and change that to 90 degrees select both groups align and then group actually I didn't group on that occasion I probably should have but never mind you get the idea um, so you can see there I've got a pattern now with two colors but I've got a whole mess in my layers panel and this won't help me when I come to transfer it to the machine for drawing so I'm going to start by ungrouping you can see lots of um, groups appeared there but I'm going to ungroup a second time to release all of those shapes from all of their groups now what I can do by left clicking and then holding down the control key and left clicking each additional shape in the same color I can select all of the shapes that have that particular color and then group those into one group basically what I want to end up with is two groups and each has one color in it and you'll see why when I come to transfer the designs so that's my first group done for the second one all I have to do is select the first shape and then hold down the shift key and select the last shape in the row or yeah row um, and then it will select everything else in between and then click the group button and you can see then it's given me that second group and obviously by clicking on the title of the group you can change the name so I've named them color one and color two and then I've selected both groups and I'm grouping them into another group and I'll call that two colors also I need to make sure I set the properties to draw before I transfer this design over okay so that's single color two color how about a rainbow this time let's try this shape basically when you have a squished circle you will get a very condensed pattern in the middle however if you use quite an open shape then you will get um, almost like a ribbon around the outside of a design so for this one I started with red of the rainbow and then for the second one I changed the angle by two degrees changed it to orange the next one four degrees changed it to yellow and then I carried on with this two degree step color change all the way through until I'd done red orange yellow green blue and I kind of tweaked it at the end so it's almost all of the colors of the rainbow Again, just select them all align them and you'll see bish bash bosh look a beautiful rainbow ribbon that would look good on a scrapbook page or perhaps on the front of a card right okay another alternative how about um, a tonal design so for this one I've chosen the scalloped circle I won't change any of its dimensions I'll change its starting line color though then I'll copy and paste this time a two degree angle shift change its color to pink paste the next one I'm not going to change the color here though just the angle and then the next one angle and color And then finally I'll put another purple one on and change the angle select them all align them and there we go okay one more this time something different though 
in that we're still going to use angles, but I'm going to be using the offset tool a bit in this one. So the first thing that I'm going to do is to a two millimeter inward rounded offset. I'm then going to delete the one that's got the sharp points on the scallop. And then I'm going to go through the following process. Offset one millimeter inwards rounded change the angle by one degree then basically I'm going to keep repeating that I don't need to select anything because the shape the new shape is already selected each time we create a new one so it's offset angle change one degree offset angle change one degree offset angle change one degree and I think you can already see the pattern forming. It's almost like a wavy ribbon. Don't forget to group things because they're easier to manage then. Okay, so there's a few ideas for you in terms of various different ways to use this technique. Now I'd like to show you how I transfer it to the machine to make sure that I can draw it in individual colors at each stage. So for a single color design, it's easy. Just send it as you normally would. For a multicolored design, it's different. So I'm gonna use this method. one make sure I set all of the lines to draw now if you're doing one design you didn't need to select all those layers but basically I'm going to work on the two color designs so because I've got loads on here I'm going to shut down or, or hide all of the other bits and pieces so you can just see or focus on what I'm working on here so remember how I said about naming the layers color one and color two well hide color one transfer sorry hide color 2 transfer color 1 and you'll get the error message saying it can't transfer the hidden data that's perfect that's exactly what we want when we get to the machine we load it as we would any other design regardless of the method of transfer set the option to draw and then send it through the machine with your first color Obviously I'm using one of the universal pen holders here with one of my own pens, but you can do this technique with the standard pen holder too. And this technique is also achievable with any of the scan and cut machines. Some of them will need you to transfer it via USB though. Okay, that's color one done. Now color two, so we hide color one, show color two and transfer that. Again, you'll get this error message. That's fine. That's exactly what we want. Back to the machine. Retrieve the new design. We haven't moved our mat. We haven't taken it out. We've left it exactly where it was. We set the machine to draw, set all the things we need to set, and then set the machine going. As you can probably tell, I've actually changed my pen in between as well. So that's something important you need to make sure you've done. And it's now drawing that second color in between the first color. Easy when you know how and you know how now. Okay there we go a fabulous idea for using canvas workspace and your machine to draw out patterns for use in your papercraft projects. I hope you've enjoyed watching and will leave me a thumbs up. That's it for this video. If you have enjoyed your time with me today, please remember to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for notifications of future videos. In the meantime, thank you again for watching and I will see you hopefully next time.